What if you could build a business that gives you the life of freedom you deserve? What if you could find the secrets to marketing, leadership, customer service, and other aspects of business that help you exceed your goals? What if you could walk away from your business for 30 days and it never misses a beat? That's what this podcast is for, to help business leaders like you find freedom from the day-to-day grind and start spending your time doing the things you love. I'm Levi McClendon, and my co-host is Josh Taylor, and this is the Cheers to Freedom podcast. Hey, welcome to the Cheers to Freedom podcast. I am your host, Josh Taylor. I'm with my co-host, Levi McClendon. Levi. Hello, Josh. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Good. Good, good. That's awesome. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. Would you rather have the most beautiful, all the bells and whistles, coolest little animations and scrolling in things like the Opspot O rolling in with this cool little animation, the awesomest website anyone has ever seen? Or an ugly website that makes you a ton of money. I thought you were going to ask me. That, I oh, thought you were going to ask me about like my wife when you started saying, "Would you rather have a beautiful?" And then, and then I started thinking about that, Josh. I'm going to get back to that. Absolutely, we want the website that is producing revenue. So yes, I want to. I, I don't care how beautiful the website is, as long as it works well and meets my needs. And I'm going to go ahead and roll right into that with 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 women. Okay, I know. Sorry, I'm getting I'm derailed a little bit, but think about this. Hold on. Nervous now. I know you are, because we didn't we don't rehearse these. Okay, I was thinking about when you were asking me that question. Is he going to ask about uh, for what a reason my wife like a girl? And I would say in my early teens, right, it was more about you know looks than actual substance. Substance. Thank you. And the older you get, and stuff, the more you realize that that looks they only again. My mom used to always say looks are you know, skin deep or whatever she would say. And I'd always be like, what do you mean, mom? The older you get, the more you realize that. I would much rather have a website that generates money. I'd much rather have a wife, even though I have both, a beautiful wife with substance. But that is huge. Substance is huge. What are we getting from that? It's way more important than the way that something actually looks. Yeah. Car wash marketing rule number eight is of the 10 rules that we're going through for Dan, through Dan Kennedy's book, Magnetic Marketing, we've adapted them to car washes. Rule number eight is uh, design will not be the priority. Now, I changed this one up a little bit from what he actually has in there because he says that well, I, it will look like a mail order something. And that, you know, we, I changed it up to meet the content and the concept of what we are doing. But design will not be the pro- priority. And it doesn't mean that design is not important. Good, good design is important. We design things that look good. But looking good is secondary. What is on it? What is being said? What is grabbing the attention of the customer? That's what we focus on. Are we conveying the message that we want to convey to them? And are we putting the things on there that are going to speak to the customer? Is it a compelling offer? Is the message clear? We go through, when, when we design websites, we, I think we design beautiful websites, some of the best websites in the car wash industry. But when we design those websites, we don't like to be held back by brand guides. Brand guides are important. It's important to stick with those as close as you can. But sometimes you got to veer away from the brand guide because it doesn't always translate. It doesn't always translate to your customer. It doesn't always translate to the media that you're using, whether it's a website, social media, print, whatever it might be. What you want to do is grab people's attention. And sometimes you got to veer away from the brand guide to do that. So I feel like car washes should become obsessed with the message that is being put on their content rather than the way that it looks. I feel like it's the other way around and we become obsessed by the things that it look, by the way that it looks, that it actually holds us back from the revenue that could be generated from the content. Well, not just in a website. I think in any, as you know, any call to action, I've seen a lot of direct mail pieces or you know, door hangers, things like that, where our clients will have hired a design company and they'll put something together that looks really nice, but you don't know what you want somebody to do. Like, yeah, it's eye popping, catching, but the wrong words are being caught, the the wrong call to action. And I think we talked about this early on that our minds, there's two things that we, that our minds are constantly trying to do and conserve calories, right? And survive. And when you make people think too much, we zone out and we don't know. It's just like we, we pass it on. We don't get it. We move on. But when we're very clear and concise, man, I'd rather have a white sheet of paper with a black lettering that said free car wash 
scan here. I mean, what did that take? It, not much, not a lot of design to that. Now, I'm not saying to go out and do that, but it would work. It would work very similarly to the QR code that bounced around during the Super Bowl ad. I mean, there's nothing to it. There's not a lot of design there, but it, it shut it was the more servers of, that, of that company down. Yeah, shut down the servers of because it was it was actually the curiosity, right? I would rather have a some something like that that is going to get somebody's attention and very clear that you 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 that call to action than a very beautiful design. It'll work every time. Yeah, yeah. I, I think we need to become obsessed over clarity rather than flashy gimmicks. And mm -hmm. that needs to be, you know, the design is the tangible thing. It's easy to see. It looks cool. All of these things. But you're right. We, we have worked with customers that are using other agencies for graphic design sometimes, and they ask for our feedback. And we'll come back and say, man, this looks really great, but it's not going to work. And the reason why is because it's too flashy. There's too much going on. It's overwhelming to the customer's eye. They don't know where to look. And if they don't know where to look, then they're not reading the words that you want them to read. And they're, therefore, they're not going to take the action you want them to take. And that's what you need to focus on is we, are we getting them to read what we want them to read to take the action we want? Them? I think one of the best examples of this, Josh, is a internet search provider that came onto the scene years ago with absolute simplicity, probably name who they are, Google, right? They came on and had a one search. I mean, and what was their goal? It was really to make it fast, like they wanted, but that was their goal. Make it fast. They didn't have, you know, the other providers had just a bunch of content and stuff on their, their, and Google came in and made a very, very fast. That's what people wanted. They wanted to be able to search and wanted to do it fast. And they were able to speak to the audience and came in and crushed it. And they're still to this day, go to google.com, like Google, it's very simple. And it does from the very beginning, they've stuck to who they are. And I think that's what we need to do is, is that less is more. The KISS theory, you name it, right? Keep it simple, stupid. Less is more. We know what it is. You, you know, we sometimes just get a little overtaken by the bells and whistles. And so we just need to, I think, sometimes tone it back a little bit. When I first started building websites, I was a graphic designer, website designer first, and then got into copywriting and learning the importance of copy. And when I technically became a copywriter over a designer. And that's, that's the conversations that I, ha I would have to have with customers is they wanted to focus on the design and let's get the design and let's see how it's going to look. And then let's put in the copy. And I was like, no, you, you're doing it the wrong way. You got to have your message there first and then help let the design fit around the yeah. message. Yeah, Don't do good. it the other way around. And the reality is, is most graphic designers are not copywriters, which means that they're designing things for you to look good, but not to sell. So focus right. on what's going to sell first and then build the design around, around it. it. Again, good design is important yeah. and we do do good design, but we don't do good design at the expense of making the message clear and getting results from it, which is going to be those words like we talked about in the last rule, that copy, that copy, that clarity has got to be the priority and design is built around that. So rule number eight, design eight. will not be the priority that's hard for you graphic designers out there here, but if you're a graphic designer, you're doing your customers a huge service by helping them get the message first and then building that design around the message. And if you're a good graphic designer, you're going to make that work and you're going to make it work really, really well. So rule number eight, Absolutely. design will not be the priority. Design will not be, Josh, this has been fun. I know we have, what do we have? One or two more? We have two more. Two more. I love how, honestly, there's 10 of these rules, but they all interlink and they're really not that difficult. So I don't want people to be overwhelmed going, oh my gosh, there's 10 things I need to do. Honestly, you go back and think about putting all these together into one, let's say one ad copy. It, it's really not rocket science. It's actually simplifying everything that you are needing to do. And if you're not doing it to change and to pivot is going to be very easy. So I love how these are all interlinking. So, so nice. Well, here, here's a line that I wrote this morning for some collateral that we're working on for OpSpot is your car wash's marketing should be simple and it should be profitable. And that's what we try to help you do. It doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be something that you overthink. It just needs to be simple. And that's what these 10, 10 rules are is a simple steps that you can take to sim really simplify your marketing and stop chasing after all the other stuff. That's just a distraction. And Oftentimes, just a money pit. So, sweet, awesome. Well, rule number nine is tomorrow. 
And I'm excited about these last two to wrap this up. Uh, this has been a fun mini series, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. All right. Cheers.